The New York Times has taken another brave stand, this time against fire. Uh, not against forest fires or, or fires at children's hospitals or, or even against setting hobos on fire for sport. No, the New York Times and writer Steffian is all worked up about fire in general, like that the cavemen learned to make fire. I'm Steve Green, and I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm here with Scott Ott and Bill Whittle to give you the right angle on fire if you can believe this. Uh, gents, I have to quote you directly from uh, from this story. Writing about early humans and our campfires, Yin warns, this is a quote, there were downsides. Occasionally, the smoke burned their eyes and seared their lungs. Their food was likely coated with char, which might have increased their risk for certain cancers. With everyone congregated in one place, diseases could have been transmitted more easily. Frightening stuff, cancer, infectious disease, uh, meat with a delicious char on the outside. It's a miracle our forebears survived their dalliance with this deadly force. Uh, Scott, when you think about all that, Prometheus really didn't get half the torture he deserved for introducing us to <laughs> ooh, fire, did he? You know, I'm first thinking, I mean, I don't know the guy, but I'm thinking he had some sort of traumatic experience at summer camp. <laughs> is what, you know, <laughs> just everything you're describing there. What is, is the next in the series? She, uh, the she, wheel, I believe, Steph, yeah. You know, in the early days, the wheel occasionally would run over the foot of cro Man <laughs> or something. It's unbelievable. Well, and of course, this, this was because at that time, uh, fire was, we call it fire now, but back then they referred to it as the external combustion engine. <laughs> and that was what was causing uh, climate change to happen back That's then. Right. And, you know, because every, have you ever seen a picture of caveman where there's not a volcano going off in the background somewhere? I mean, the place was a mess. Yeah, this is, this is, I really do think it is part of the left's, um, pushing us on this idea that burning things is bad. One way or the other, burning things is bad. And whether you do that with oil or with wood or it's, you know, the caveman, he should have known better. How he survived that, I don't know. Because it's funny, because the left are the great advocates of Darwinism. So they're always pushing this on us. In fact, social Darwinism is their, is their key cause. And now to suggest that somehow Darwinism didn't work, I mean, what do you believe in it or not? Either it was a competitive advantage or it wasn't. But you can't have it both ways, brother. Oh, it's got It's even worse than that. You know, those of us on the right are supposed to be, you know, the stodgy old fogies. But they want to go back to pre-fire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> not pre-internet, pre-fire. All right. Believe it or not, where there's smoke, there's fire. I want you to listen to this next part. It's another quote. Anthropologists have speculated that inhaling smoke led to the discovery... <gasps> of smoking. Humans have long used fire to modify their environment and burn carbon, practices that now have us in the throes of climate change. Fire is even tied to the rise of patriarchy by allowing men to go out hunting while women stayed behind to cook by the fire. It spawned gender norms that still exist today. How could we? Bill, Shouldn't it seem obvious to any progressive reader of Steph Yin's article that women simply can't be trusted with fire? What's obvious is to any reader with a sense of history is that we are in the end days of this civilization. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what's obvious. Yeah. Um, where do you begin with this? First of all, <laughs> anywhere, if it weren't for the, anywhere. If it weren't, yeah, if it weren't for the paper of record, most of us would never know what fire was or what it did. So first of all, we have to thank the, yeah, the New York right. Times for that kind That's of cutting-edge reporting that they've become so well-known for. Secondly, there are so many things wrong with this, we just don't have time to, to plug them. But a good example is by, by inhaling all of the smoke and, and, and being around carcinogens caused by fire, it could lead them to develop cancers. Well... <laughs> there were no cancers among cavemen before fire because before fire, nobody lived past 18 and uh, nobody lived long enough to get cancer. They didn't live long enough to get bone disease. They didn't live long enough to get dementia. There was no Alzheimer's among the cavemen because they died when they were 20. If you lived a long and full life, you could maybe make it to 20. The idea that somehow fire uh, is uh, spreading germs around, I would have thought that if you have a piece of meat that's covered in bacteria because it's been on the ground and then you throw it in the fire for several hours, I would think that would actually help in terms of eliminating bacteria. And as far as the whole patriarchy thing goes, 
what they're basically saying is fire led to the hunting. Fire led to hunting. They're perfectly fine with, with humans being gatherers because the men and the women went out and gathered together as one. No one stronger than the other, no one faster, all simply walking through the fields of strawberries that the ancient, uh, that the ancient savannah used to consist of. Nothing but strawberries in pairs. Just pluck them gently off of the, off of the branches and put them in your basket <laughs> and go home and make a nice salad, maybe some arugula or some kale if you can find it. Uh, no. People were hunting before they were cooking. People were hunting before they were cooking. How do we know this? We know this because animals hunt and they don't cook. We know this because that the cheetah or the lion hunts live meat and eats it, but doesn't cook it because it hasn't figured it out yet. And, and so this idea that the patriarchy is caused because now there's something for them to sit around and stay home for while the men go out and work does not apply to fire. It applies to the New York Times, but it doesn't apply to fire. Well, you know, fire is the basis of technology, and technology is the great leveler between men and women because you don't have Precisely. to rely on, uh, on, on brute strength anymore, or sheer size. Like, you know, it, it's always great fun picking on the New York Times, but I have to get serious here for, uh, for just a minute. Ayn Rand said about smoking, I like to think of fire held in a man's hand. Fire, a dangerous force tamed at his fingertips. I often wonder about the hours when a man sits alone watching the smoke of a cigarette, thinking... I wonder what great things have come from such hours. When a man thinks there is a spot of fire alive in his mind, and it is proper that he should have the burning point of a cigarette as his one expression. Well, Ayn Rand was wrong about cigarettes. They're what ended up killing her. But she was right about fire, that dangerous force tamed. Now, everything around you, from the pencil in your shirt pocket to the tablet computer that makes it possible to watch YouTube videos like this one from the back seat of a moving car flying down an interstate highway at 80 miles an hour, all of it was made possible by the taming of fire. Uh, that we live on a planet capable of sustaining 7 billion unique and oftentimes wonderful people. Well, again, that's made possible by taming that dangerous force. And it's fire that will one day take us to other planets around other stars. So when clever lefty writers like Steph Yin tut tut fire, they're really condemning humanity and all of the great and wonderful things we have. Or as Hillary Clinton said, we're going to take things away from you on behalf of the common good. And you know what? You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. And that is the right angle on fire, which I can't believe we had to make this show, which is made possible by the paying members of BillWhittle.com. Thanks for watching. The person that brought the fire didn't build that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>